What's going on, YouTubers? Welcome to another video. So it is the end of the year, so we're doing an end of the year room tour, which I know I show my collection pretty much almost every single day in videos, but I don't necessarily show every single statue or talk about the individual statues. And this is also great for people who aren't sub to the channel to just get a good look at a very extensive statue collection. You know, I haven't counted how many recently, but if one of you wants to count how many I have, throw a number down below so I know. But when you do enter the basement, you know, I have this sign in case I ever have like family over or guests or whatever, which is extremely rare, bear in mind. It might be like a few times a year. But, you know, when you open the basement door, you know, this is what we're greeted with. And now for the man cave, I do have everything set up on an Alexa system for the lighting. Alexa, turn on man cave. Boom. So as you can see, I actually uh, have lighting here. I have multiple air purifiers throughout the entire collection uh, to help reduce dust. This is under the stairs. There's just a ton of boxes in there. People always ask about boxes. You have to keep them. And I have them under the stairs, inside my garage, inside my attic. But of course, the first thing we see is this wolf predator setup I've built, which looks absolutely incredible. You got the OG sideshow, you know, one third. I drove to Denver, Colorado to buy this. Literally met the dude at a bank, withdrew 2,500 cash and gave it to him. <laughs> it was brand new when I got it. And we got the cool props bust as well, which I've put some things underneath it to like boost it up because the way they angle it's kind of ridiculous. So I did that so it looks more upwards, added that little 3D thing. And then this is a custom mask by Casey McNabb out of Idaho. And I bought the little wall thing from eBay and got a little, you know, metal thing as well. So you can see that. And then this is like a custom, uh, I think it might be, I don't know, but it's like a custom wolf, uh, you know, plasma gun. And then I put it on my Trick or Treat Studios Kandarian dagger, you know, display stand. So that's pretty much it for Wolf. I have considered adding potentially some, uh, like the mines, like right there and there. I saw someone selling some life size. I was thinking, man, that looked pretty cool having the mines on each side of that mask. So I may consider that. But, you know, Wolf is probably my favorite predator. This, Jungle Hunter, Berserker, those are my three favorite. But I absolutely love Wolf, just how tough and badass he is. So absolutely love this display. It's unfortunate the lighting isn't super good over here. Hence, I do that. But, you know, I built this ultimate AVP wall and Wolf just fit great right here considering the size of his base and whatnot. Underneath you got the Fugitive Predator bust hand. And then you got in the back the other hand uh, of the Fugitive Predator bust. You know, and then you got XM Studios Predator one third and Dog Alien by Prime One. Both are excellent pieces. And they both uh, work really good down low. Now, the only unfortunate thing is with the XM Predator, I can't display his giant, you know, like, staff or whatever, which looks really cool because that thing's like three feet long. Otherwise, he actually works really good down low because his pose, you know, you're not missing any detail. Dog Alien looks great. No complaints there. Now, you come over, you do have the Fugitive Predator bus, which, by the way, this is for sale. So if anyone's interested, please message me. I will let it go very cheap. Uh, it is a great bust, but I'm getting a Jungle Hunter bust, which will obviously match the Cinema Cat one-third better. You know, and of course, we can't forget XM Alien as well. Absolutely crazy piece. This thing is over three feet long, like 31 inches tall. It's very dynamic, which I really like. Really good paint app and detail. Just a very cool looking alien. Now, this is not a like movie version. This is a concept piece by Naren. But overall, very, very cool piece. And I think it goes great with Wolf because he's also very dynamic. And this looks like an alien warrior. You know, this is a Jungle Hunter mask by Icon. Uh, and so it's really cool. It has uh, like this, the blades that hold the mask. I added these 3D printed things I got off Etsy. You'll notice I had a lot of props and everything and why not just to enhance the display. I don't like just, you know, blank walls. I think that looks terrible. And I don't like an overabundance of posters either. I like mixing it with posters, props, and other things. You know, like this uh, AVP sign is actually made out of wood. Got this off of Etsy. I use Etsy for a lot of things, but this looks awesome. You know, the AVP logo, because that's like the AVP display. This is, you know, the original Predator display. And I used to own Prime 1, or 
Queen Studios Big Chap Busts. You know, if you look back, I had it for many months. I actually sold it. I made a very large profit of like $3,000 and I bought it again. That's after I bought it. And I'll be getting it again in about 60 days. For now, you know, we're just putting this here. You know, but this is obviously the Prime One Big Chap One Third, the OG one with the wall. Uh, still to this day, probably my favorite alien statue. Just freaking crazy good paint app. Massive wall. Really amazing. Cinema Cat Predator is my favorite Predator on this wall. It slightly edges out Wolf because it just has a better paint app. You know, this is a perfect Predator statue, basically. Love the concept, the base, the pose is so good. Amazing piece. You know, and it scales perfectly here. Uh, this egg is actually part of him, the Alien Warrior. Uh, Non-scale by Prime One. This is the deluxe bonus version where it comes with that little plasma gun. Uh, this is uh, probably my second favorite alien statue. I like it more than Dog and XM. You know, and then this is a custom dog alien bust. Uh, this is by Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, so Chase Smith painted it. He's one of the, you know, best known well painters in the world when it comes to like alien collectibles. So it's just an insane paint app, you know, just like crazy good. I like this is definitely much higher quality paint app than the Queen Studios one was. Plus that open mouth is just absolute killer. Like, holy crap, that's good. This does also have a extended one as well, the inner mouth, uh, which for the most part, I've been displaying the shorter one just because the long one comes out really long, you know, but absolutely love that bust, you know, and, in the middle of the display, we got the Sideshow Alien Egg, HCG Face Hugger, and Chest Burster. So, you know, the whole idea is like the transformation of the alien from egg to face hugger to chest burster. And normally I would have that down there as well, because that's like the full transformation up to the alien. You know, then we got Berserker Predator. This is by Infinity Studios. This is technically one fourth, but it's quite a big piece. And it does, you know, look like it scales pretty decent next to the alien. You know, it's just a really cool concept. You know, he's chopping off the head of the, you know, jungle hunter, basically. Really good paint app. Cool base. And you're basically at one and a half predators. So, very cool statue for sure. But yeah, that's basically the AVP wall. Uh, we're just going to add my custom predator bus, which I'm actually, you know, like working on building its base. You know, I'm going to be using that predator logo, which is for my Prime 1 statue, and then most likely that turntable, but maybe not. And then this is a Mo Kentaro base that came with my Kentaro custom statue. But the Jungle Hunter bus will go there, we'll boost it up a little bit, put some leaves and everything around it, put, you know, a lot of things. It's gonna look really sick, and it's most likely gonna go just right there. But I'm very excited to get it. Uh, it should be ready in about two weeks. You know, so once you come to this, you know, shelf, which is a shorter shelf, uh, these are all garage shelves uh, just here where I put fabric like curtains to cover the wood. I use black painter's tape to cover the holes in it. And links in the description below if any of you are, you know, interested in building this type of shelving. The reason I like it, it's very open and it holds up to 800 pounds of shelf. And it's very cost effective versus, you know, going to Ikea and doing Detolfs and Bestas. You know, and they have many different sizes. This is 48 inches wide by 24 inches deep. This is 36 inches wide by 18 or 20 inches deep. I have a few that are 18, a few that are 20. Anyways, this uh, once you go to the left, this is where we get into my main horde display. You know, starting out with my favorite horde icon, Pennywise. Uh, this is one third scale. This is by Elite Creature Collectibles. Uh, to this day, one of my favorite one third scale statues. Absolutely incredible. Comes with a swap out portrait. And I do like that portrait a lot, but I do exclusively display this one because I have the bus that displays the normal head. So I've pretty much had this on the entire time I've owned the statue. I've only shown that one off a few times, but I just prefer it this way. You know, so extremely cool statue. Absolutely love it. Best Pennywise in the market for statues. And then the best bust, hands down, blue box hyper with my Pennywise half scale by Prime One base. So it's a very unique situation on how I got this base. I got it for free in essence. My buddy sold me his Pennywise half scale for like 1200 bucks and I got it. I liked it, but there's just too many things I hated about it. The fact that 
balloon string went through the finger. I hated the hair and whatnot. So I sold just the body to someone for $1,200 plus shipping and kept the base so I could utilize it for the bust. And then I added this it 3d printed logo, got a balloon that lights up and a Pennywise logo also by blue box for their second bust. But for me, this is one of my favorite pieces in my collection. Uh, the detail is just uncanny, absolutely insanely good light up glass eyes, silicone hand punched hair. Now this year, a uh, big focus of mine has just been really getting the highest quality possible pieces. And that includes a lot of silicone busts. Above, you got a little Etsy SS Georgie, you know, wall thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, below you go to the conjuring, you know, I think it just fits really good having Pennywise near the nun. So this is by trick or treat studios inside a glass curio shelf. Annabelle holding the card says, miss me. Very cool. Uh, then you got blue box hypers, nun, another silicone bust. Fortunately, she looks really good down low due to her eyes being very wide open, her mouth. Very cool piece. And to the left, I got a custom hand painted, uh, you know, like painting of none from the movie, you know, from Conjuring 2. So very cool piece. Come above, you got the PCS Trio, uh, which are looks so good together. So good. My favorite is hands down Ghostface. I added a bunch of stuff to him to make this look better, but he himself looks fantastic. Absolutely love the Scream movies, the OG. But this came with a voice changer. I added a telephone. I added a VHS cassette of Halloween because they watched that in the original movie. And I got a bunch of like broken glass because they broke the window. You know, like he's breaking into the house, it seems like, or breaking out, I can't tell. But, you know, very cool piece. You know, above you got this little scream mask. These are all by Nightmare Trash off Etsy. And then I got that little custom knife and a custom Myers life-size mask just because I feel like Halloween ties in good with Scream because they mention it so many times they watch it during the movie so I just feel like it ties in good you know then you got PCS Myers this was my first one-third horror by PCS still a great piece to this day I did not get the exclusive unfortunately but I added these two uh, that's a custom and that is from Spirit Halloween and I also added uh, another pumpkin there just because it looks cool. And I also bloodied up my knife with using fake blood. I like the real hair on this one. There, it does come with a sculpted one, but I just like the real hair. I think it looks much better. And this is another knife by Nightmare Trash. Spirit Halloween hammer from Leatherface. Here's my Leatherface. I actually cut his hair to make it shorter because it was way too long and looked ridiculous. Uh, this is my least favorite of the three. I really wish they added a backdrop, and I'm trying to buy one from Evil Shed on Instagram, but the guy doesn't want to make it for me, even though he's made it for others, which is annoying because I wanted to get that, but still great statue altogether. I feel like PCS just cut some corners. They should have given a uh, base over the entire piece, you know, not just have it blank right there, and they should have added a backdrop. Because, I mean, that was not a cheap piece, though. It was like $1,500. Underneath, you got Elite Creature Collectibles, a little Mogwai Gremlin, Gizmo, name of my dog, and the life-size Gremlin, Mohawk Gremlin. Very, very cool. So, I absolutely love that display. I love Gremlins, hence I named my dog literally after Gizmo. To the left... Pan's Labyrinth display, also by Elite Creature Collectibles. So this is the Pale Man, very cool piece, very big, very heavy, glass eyes. You know, it's just translucent resin, but they do such a good job in the actual, you know, like paint app and the details and crazy good. Got the Fawn, huge bust, big eyes, very cool piece. You know, and then the Fawn One Third, also a very cool piece. Comes with the frog. They have lots of like Easter eggs on it. He has the three fairies. And then PCS One Four Scale Pumpkin Head. And then I added that little 3D logo in front because I think it looks cool. 
fortunately all these pieces look pretty good down low uh, so that's the reason they do that i try to you know do two things when displaying my statues i want it to look good down low if it's going down low and two it needs to match theme wise but i do try to prioritize my absolute best statues being top shelf rarely will i put my best ones down low now even though i feel like those pieces are better than those uh, Myers is too tall and those pieces are too tall to go download and look good. Uh, prime one Ash. I mostly display this, you know, possessed head. I really like it. It's more detailed. It fits my whole horror theme a little bit better. And I just think it's awesome. So really like this statue. It's absolutely huge, super cool. You know, such a great piece. Uh, this, uh, Evil Dead 2 Skull by Evil Shed, Trick or Treat, Kandarian Dagger. Looks fantastic the way I did that. And then you got a custom Etsy Book of the Dead Necronomicon. Uh, this one's more so like the version from Army of Darkness, which is actually my favorite, you know, Ash movie. I loved Army of Darkness growing up. And then this is a one-third scale version you know, to kind of like match him. And, and then this is a life-size custom silicone hand that was cut off. This is super freaking cool and gross and epic. I love that. So I absolutely love my Evil Dead display. It's freaking perfect. Then we come into Freddy and Jason, all ECC, Elite Creature Collectibles. That is from Spirit Halloween. You got the bust. This is a custom mask by Camp something. I can't remember. But I did custom masks. I hated the mask it came with. Great bust though overall. Super cool, super detailed, glass eyes. You know, just a very cool piece. Huge, heavy. The one-third Jason, one of my favorite one-thirds as well. He also does have the removable mask. They have light up, but I don't have it plugged in. But very cool piece. It's like 43 inches tall to the top of that. So super big. You got Freddy as well. He has the infinity base, but I don't use the light. Plus mine's broke. But again, another fantastic piece. Very, very cool. That is from Nightmare Trash, as is the Freddy vs. Jason, because that's kind of like my theme, Freddy vs. Jason. And that poster works so good, because you got Freddy on the left, Jason on the right, right in the middle of the statues. So it's just a perfect display. Now then you got the Freddy Latte's bust. I did do a custom hat on this bad boy. Uh, got it from Lucas Designs. He did a really good job on this hat. It has like real burn marks. Looks so much better than the ECC one. Very cool bust. I absolutely love it. Then we come into my custom Chucky 2. This is by Belgium Chucky of Etsy. Uh, he did such a good job on this Chucky doll. Easily my favorite Chucky doll in the market. Has acrylic teeth, glass eyes, the hair, the costume, multiple hands. He's flipping you off. That box is from NECA Chucky, which is down here. You got the NECA Chucky and NECA Tiffany from Bride. Very cool. You know, and I try to post these things generally from a scene from the movie. When they first showed off Tiffany, she had that lighter and she was smoking a cigarette. So I feel like that's a perfect pose. And Chucky, that's the very end scene when he was holding the gun while holding the heart of Dambala. And then I also got the voodoo for dummies right there in the back. You know, I like to add all these little Easter eggs, you know, like Chucky 2. You have the Chucky 2 knife from the end of the movie. The F-U-B, you know, he wrote when he killed the teacher. And then you got the... You know, <clears throat> yardstick he used to kill her, batteries, the voodoo doll, and the voodoo knife, which are all Chucky one, actually. But such a perfect Chucky display, so I freaking love it. And Chucky and Freddy are my two other favorite horror icons. So, you know, I would put those as my top favorite, and then probably Ghostface after that. Yeah, then we go into, like, my more monsters, uh, including, you know, vampires and just different creatures. Now, I'd say horror kind of stops right here. Even though this is still technically considered horror, I consider it more just my monster display. So you have the Reaper from Blade 2, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, you got the bust and one-third. And in the middle, you got that new PCS Blade, which looks freaking amazing. Now, these pieces are all absolutely phenomenal. You know, these one-thirds are just crazy. This is the Reaper placard. That is a poster I printed out from the original. I can't remember. And then that Warren's Demonology, which I'm actually going to move eventually up there. You know, and we'll move this here. Just been lazy. But, yeah, fantastic blade setup. 
Underneath, we got ECC Anubis, sculpted by Mio Nakamura, and a custom mummy statue by Dream Figures. Very cool. And I added that like book of the dead in front. Come to left, you got my only ARH Studios statue, their Medusa, which is still their best piece to date. And ECC Cyclops, which I feel like just fits really good theme-wise of that Greek theme, you know, to kind of represent the movie of the mummies and Clash of the Titans. Alrighty, and so next part of the setup is my ultimate underworld setup, the ECC Marcus Boston one third and Lycan Boston one third. Uh, I really like this type of setup where you do the two one thirds in the middle, the bus on each end, similar to Freddy and Jason. I'll be doing the same thing with, you know, the Predator and Alien, and I'd love to somehow do it with my Terminator setup, but we got the life size. But Marcus and Lycan, these were pieces I long sought out when I first got into collecting that like ultimate grail pieces. I sold a ton of statues. It cost me a lot of money, but I'm very happy I did it. You got the Marcus bust, very underrated bust. And I added the HCG Lucian pendant, you know, very cool bust. Of course, the Marcus one third, another one of my favorites. Crazy cool piece, super giant wingspan, you know, very high quality, like material used for, you know, his pants and, you know, such a dynamic pose. He's flying so freaking cool. The HCG, HCG Celine's like, like Chinese stars that she'd throw at Lycans. Now that's in the original Underworld movie. The Lycan one third. Again, so freaking cool. Absolutely love this display. And then the Lycan bust just looks perfect together. You know, has real hair giant mouth I'm freaking bite my hand off bite my neck underneath you got the crime one vampirella and red sonia display now she is newer to the cave just added her a few weeks ago but gorgeous piece super cool looks so good next to the red sonia so yeah that display is absolute killer and that concludes the whole monster display and horde display you know, one thing when doing a room tour, I find a lot of people show a lot of close-ups of everything, but they don't show the full room. You know, you got to get these big, wide-out angle shots like this. So you can really gauge, like, the size of the room and how the display looks as a whole, not just each piece individually. So, yeah, then you come over here. That You know, this is a 77-inch OLED TV. Uh, you know, I game and watch a lot of TV down here. I used to have a surround sound, but I got rid of it, and I just use uh, PlayStation headphones, you know, which is 3D audio. There's a little gizmo. Uh, this is my only life-size piece in the collection, like true one-to-one, -one, like six feet tall. Sideshow Collectibles version two. Again, I have added a lot to this piece to improve it. I added a giant Terminator 3D printed logo, as well as a Cyberdyne logo. Two custom skulls from Etsy, a uh, brain chip, and a bunch of grenades, and a cigarette. And they all have meaning. Cigarette is from Sarah Connor. The guns are from Arnold. Skulls are just from their scene. The chip also from, you know, everything. So, very cool. Uh, now, for me, I would love to display this gun up high, but you got this giant wooden thing above. So, unfortunately, I can't unless I move this display. But this is the best look I can get. I don't mind the double gun up, but it blocks a lot of the middle part. So I think this is the best look I can get. My favorite look is having that completely up high, because then it makes it like eight feet tall and it doesn't block anything. So I have thought often, you know, should I move my Terminator display to where my monster display is? Because then you could do, you know, like a, it'd be the ultimate Terminator wall, but then we ruin this wall. You know, so it's been a big debate of mine. You now, because we're still adding quite a few more Terminator pieces. But I do feel like, as of right now, I have pretty much the cream of the crop. Although I will say, I would prefer version one of the Endo life size by Sideshow. I think it looks better. And I prefer the one gun versus the two. But overall, this is still a fantastic piece. I got it super cheap for like three grand. It had a lot of issues, you know, damage, missing fingers. I got a like a 3D printed one. But overall, it's still a great piece. You know, huge, as tall as me, and I'm a, 
a big kid. Then we got the two Ultimate Terminator Grails, and both of mine have been, you know, customized. The T-1000 by Queen Studios. All these are chromed out, you know. I actually got this from another fellow YouTuber out of France. His name is Virtual Devil. I mean, him did a little exchange. I exchanged my Pirates of the Caribbean Jack Sparrow bust for this. And it was definitely well worth it just because Jack was a little out of place for me. I didn't have good companion pieces and I needed this to go with my Arnold. You know, in Arnold, I did add the grenade strap with a bunch of grenades. He looks absolutely killer. Love the battle damage. You know, and I got all the prime ones on order. The Endo, the Arnold. Here you got the Sarah Connor. This is by Dark Side Collectibles. Huge base. Great piece, though. You know, for a Sarah Connor, I think it's fantastic. Uh, next, you got Alita. This is by Queen Studios, silicone bust, you know, all the detail one could ask for. Great bust, you know, pretty deep with that giant Damascus sword. You know, and then I got her paired with the Prime one, which I think just pairs super, super good. You know, it's just a killer Alita display. To the right is where we're doing my Game of Thrones setup. So we're waiting on the Khaleesi bust, which should hopefully arrive very soon. But until then, you know, we got these three little life-size eggs by Noble Collection, as well as the Tar Targaryen plaque, which I love that, and then the Prime 114th Khaleesi, Daenerys Targaryen. One of my favorite one four scales. Then you got the Night King, which is a newer acquisition, just barely got him, you know, a little while ago. Really cool piece, very cool base. And then Jon Snow. So I like having the Night King more or less surrounding them. You know, Jon Snow looks great. So it's a really awesome, you know, setup. Just waiting on Khaleesi Bust. Above, you got one of my best statues in the collection, Prime One Predator. Uh, it's more so a half scale than a one third, but huge piece. Like, as tall as me on top of this garage shelf. Monster big base, like stupid big. But he is just... You know, absolutely insane. And I got the closed mouth bust right next to him. So that looks great. And then I put the med kit. And that is a sideshow art print. But fantastic statue. Super cool. Super detailed. Super big of one of the best looking creatures ever created. You know, so that is really the main theater uh, room. You know, I call this like my theater room. But it's a pretty decent sized room. And we got, as you can see, quite a bit of statues in here. Uh, we're going to go next to the Marvel and DC room. So this is the entrance. Uh, more or less put this like pedestal with a gun. Just because there's space there. Uh, but, you know, you come in. First thing you really see is that Hulk buster. This thing is freakishly big, freakishly heavy, freakishly cool. So huge, huge, huge piece. That's what she said. Then you got the different props. Now these are by Sideshow and Hot Toys. You got a Shazam one-third scale statue uh, by Prime One. Overall, pretty good piece. Next, you got the Aquaman. I, you know, I just saw Aquaman 2, my favorite movie of the year. So I love this statue, very cool. Love the colors and the base. Prime One Suicide Squad line. Great line. You know, Deadshot, Harley, and Joker. Come above is where you're going into my Dark Knight setup. So to the right, we got Infinity Studios Silicone Selena Kyle Bust of Anne Hathaway and JD. This is the ultimate one third and bust combo. You cannot beat this. Infinity. Half torso bust with a J&D is the ultimate setup for a bust in one third. Because it just doesn't get any more better detail wise. Cream of the crop right here, folks. Then we got this poster I printed out. Noble Collection Batarang. So very cool, though. You know, love these, this setup. Very happy with it. You, know, you see those glass eyes. Silicone skin. So it just like looks like real human skin. You know, just, you can remove the mask and just have Anna Hathaway's face, but I really like just the mask on. I think it looks better. So, sometimes I'll lower the goggles on one of them. Yeah, but these pieces are fantastic. 
We're waiting on Bail Bus by Infinity to arrive right there. Now, I have thought of, you know, should I ever consider J&D, you know, Bail Batman? Obviously, it's a smaller base. It's a smaller statue, like quite a bit smaller, as you can see. But ultimately, I still like Prime 1 more. Uh, I like the base better. I like the swap outs better. The detail in the costume looks nearly identical. The only big difference is glass size and the mouth looks better on JND. But I don't think the mouth and eyes look bad on Prime 1 by any means. But I definitely love the pose, you know, arm up, holding that grappling gun just looks so cool. You know, and he pairs really good, of course, with Bane Ultimate Edition. You got Noble Collection Mask, life size. And I mostly display him arms open. I just think it looks better. It allows you to see more detail, like the vein work on the inner arm, his chest. That one's very cool as well, like the pose. It's more space saving. But as you can see, you don't see that inner arm detail. He blocks some of his chest. And you know, this pose is just so imposing as well. Just like, come at me, Batman. So very cool. To the left, you got another cream of the crop display. Infinity Joker bust with Blitzway Joker, which for me is the best Heath Ledger Joker one third scale in the market. Having seen Queen and j and in person, this for me is by far the best. The best base, the best likeness, the best overall everything. The pose, the detail. I freaking love this piece. You know, so cool. And you got the Queen Studios bank robber mask and Noble Collection, you know, like Dark Knight, this props and a like shadow box type thing. Here we also got the little bust swap out head. Although I still like that head more. The, you know, open mouth, it's just like a creepy smile. And the bust is already closed mouth, so that's why I display this one mostly. But I still love having this little bust, so I have the option. You know, bust, crazy good. Mine is a production sample, so it's not numbered. There's no COA. I got it from Comic Concepts. Uh, so this is like the very first thing they made after a prototype. They made this to approve it. You know, and they showed this out at all the cons. Like any cons you saw with Joker Bust, this is the one you saw. So, yeah, this was the very second, if you want to call it, it's almost like the second prototype. After the OG prototype, this was made, then the mass production was made. So because of that, it is quite a special piece for me. You know, it does have a little bit differences between the main production units. Here you have the butt of Darkseid. As you can see, he does not have big butt, a little flat back there, dark side. Although his legs are decent. But yeah, check out these bad boys. This is where we go into the Justice League main big DC Snyderverse display. You got dark side, 41 inch behemoth. Actually, yeah, he may actually be 43 and I think he's 41, but they're freaking huge. Super big, you know, like look at it compared to my hand. Just like these pieces are much bigger and cooler in person. You know, anytime I've had some someone who's like watched my YouTube come to the house, the first thing they do is like, this is so much bigger than I thought and so much cooler. You know, video can only do so much justice. But yeah, dark side, this is my favorite look. The eyes with the, you know, lasers coming out more or less, hand up holding that massive, like three foot long weapon. You got the three mother boxes. Steppenwolf, also extremely cool, holding the axe. He's also holding a mother box that's kind of transforming. And then this is a Victor Garduno art print. Uh, I think he does a really good job. He, you know, hand draws these, uh, which is very impressive. You know, but such a cool pairing having them like that. And then you got the Flash and Cyborg. Cyborg has this great looking light up feature. Flash. I like that pose best on Flash. They'll have a lot of swap outs. You know, but great looking pieces. We also got a Noble Collection Green Lantern ring from the Green Lantern Ryan Reynolds movie. Yeah, fantastic pieces. Really good likeness. Great detail. It's all part of, you know, the Prime 1 Justice League line. They have matching bases, as you can see. Then you come into the more so bust in one third setup of the DC. Now, because there's no bust of these. There's one of Dark Side, but it's not, it doesn't match these. So I'm not going to get it. But you got the Infinity Suit as Aquaman bust. This thing is 45 inches tall to the top of that trident. 
So it's super big and it's like 37 inches to the top of his head, I believe. So huge bus, like super big, super wide. He's a big freaking dude. Like he's, God, I, don't, I think he looks probably bigger than me right there. I mean, I guess if I was to wear that armor, I'd be that big. But huge piece, super cool though. You know, the armor's crazy cool. The face, silicone, hand punch, terror, glass eyes, you name it. Super cool piece though. Next to the Prime 1, one third Aquaman. Also looks great. Then you go into the Mera display. So, yeah, this is a killer bust in one third setup. You got Infinity Studios bust. Now she has this translucent water going around, showcasing her powers and the water base. Really cool. Then J and D Mera one third. This is still my favorite J and D statue, but we do have. Wonder Woman coming, which I think will dethrone her. But for right now, as of right now, this is my favorite one. Really good likeness. Phenomenal looking. Now behind it, we have the DC Universe 10th anniversary setup, some movies, and my extra heads for Suicide Squad and the COAs, which means Certificate of Authenticity. Next, you got the Harley Quinn setup. This is by Infinity Studios. I did add a red bra to enhance her boob size. So I just felt she was a little bit too flat chested. So that's one reason, you know, plus it matches this better because her boobs are also a little busty right there. But love this Harley Quinn bust. Super, super cool. Same with the J&D Harley. Fantastic. She has a smile with acrylic teeth, almost like dentures. You know, glass broken base. Very cool piece. And then another Victor Garduno art print. Now that actually is for this bust, but I use the... Noble Collection bat. I think it, uh, you know, it's a little bit shorter and I think it just looks a little bit better. It's decals, that one's hand painted, but this just looks cleaner and better in my opinion. All right, then we go into my ultimate Trinity setup. You know, I worked so long to get this ultimate setup, a mix of Prime One and Infinity Studios. You got the bat fleck bus. This thing is super big, three feet wide, three feet deep, three feet tall silicone mouth, glass eyes, you name it. He does have the ability to also wear the goggles if you want him wearing it, but I prefer it like this. I think that looks better. Wearing goggles, you're just blocking detail. But yeah, this piece, super big, super cool. It's one of the best busts out there. Huge base, massive cape. You know, and then I put the Batman vs Superman matching posters behind and props in between everything. Now here's the prime one, Batman one third. Great piece as well. That uh, little, you know, we got this as well from Infinity Studios and I also got a life-size battering prop right there, right there. I got coins that came with the anniversary set. You got Infinity Studios Wonder Woman bust. Probably to this day, my favorite Infinity Studios bust, I will say, is still Wonder Woman. I still think she beats out everyone else. But that she could potentially be topped. We got Khaleesi and Bail Bust arriving. So they may top her, but I still don't know if they will. God, because Wonder Woman's so good. I think Khaleesi has the biggest opportunity. I think Bell will be really good. And then we got the Wonder Woman on Horse by Prime One. This thing is 55 inches tall. So as you can see, it's almost touching the ceiling. Uh... One of my absolute favorite one-third scale statues. Super big, super heavy. Believe it or not, I did carry this all by myself over here. You know, I just removed the sword. But, yeah, this is a crazy cool piece just because, I mean, look at the size of this horse. You know, and Wonder Woman, again, looks gorgeous. Her hair, the way it's flowing. Metal, god killer sword. And this is from the Wonder Woman movie, not from, you know, Batman vs Superman or Just League. This is the god killer you know, it's real metal licensed prop, but super killer display. Then you got the Henry Cavill transformation bust, you know, going from Clark Kent to Superman. Very cool. Silicone hands, you know, as you can see, it has like real hair. Super cool. Five o'clock shadow. Love this bust. Huge. I got a little like prop of all that stuff. The key to Man of Steel and his kryptonite 
One third prime one Justice League. This one I always display that portrait using laser eyes. You know, just because the bust is the normal head. I like to alternate and have them, you know, look different. Not the exact same. Yeah, that is everything for DC in this room. Everything else is now MCU or just in general Marvel. So you go down low. We have a custom Hugh Jackman Wolverine one four scale statue. Very cool piece. And then you got a custom bust. It's like a half scale bust. And then the X-Men Adamantium collection. You got a grenade that technically goes to the sideshow collectibles Deadpool bust. Mine came damaged. I got a replacement and kept the damaged one. Maximum effort by QFig. Custom Ryan Reynolds Deadpool 1-4 scale. Super cool statue from the first movie. Tons of swap outs. Super detailed. Very cool. You got the Iron Studios 1-4 Spider-Man from No Way Home. This is my favorite Spider-Man statue, without a doubt. One of my favorite 1-4s. This thing is crazy cool. It has a really sick looking light up. He's smashing and, you know, trying to dodge four different rockets from those drones. This thing is beyond cool. Then you got Prime 1 Venom. Uh, this is a comic based version, not the movie, but it looks extremely cool. Huge piece, like 32 inches tall. You know, and it pairs really good next to Spidey in this whole display. And then you come into the MCU villains display. So the three OG villains of Avengers. You know, you got Loki holding the Tesseract, which, you know, it's a custom Tesseract I added. Ultron, he looks great. It's the only Ultron out there, and it's very rare. Thanos from Infinity War, which is, you know, my favorite movie of all time. I'm going to be watching it here in the next, uh, once I get Thor bus next week. You know, Thanos, to me, is the ultimate villain. Love, love, love that piece. And he is next to the Infinity Gauntlet by Hot Toys. Life-size prop. Very cool. And then you got my second favorite Spidey one-fourth, the Iron Spidey, which is my favorite costume overall. This is by Iron Studios. Very cool. I do prop him up so, you know, he can display Black Widow right here by Queen. You also got a, you know, Eye of Agamotto. But yeah, here is... These pieces, very freaking cool. These are all 1-4 scale. Then you got end game version of Thanos wearing the armor and a massive double-edged sword. Super cool. Like 30 inches tall. You got the two, hot, well, technically that one's the Hot Toys Gauntlet. That one is from Iron Studios Gauntlet because I got one damage. And I put it on the Hot Toys base because I just like that gauntlet more. The Hot Toys Gauntlet looks very plasticky. You got the Holy Trinity of Marvel, Iron Man, Cap, and Thor. This is Fat Thor. It's all Endgame version. You know, it's companion to this Thanos. So very cool display. I really love this display. Uh, then you got Hulk. This is from Age of Ultron by Sideshow Collectibles. Got the exclusive with the little Hulk nameplate. And we display it next to Imaginary Marts Hulk Buster. Very cool display. No, they scale good. They look right together. They're both action posed. Then we go into my Civil War setup. So this is Team Cap. Although we obviously have Groot and Thor there. They technically shouldn't be there, but whatever. We're still waiting on a Hawkeye. But Thor, Sideshow Collectibles exclusive. Still a good piece. Now, we haven't seen another Thor, like this look of Thor. And so it's still the best looking Thor one fourth out there. Iron Studios Wanda. Seems like Queen canceled their Wanda, so this is your only option for Wanda, but I still think it's absolutely amazing. It's by Iron Studios from the TV show, actually. Gentle Giant, Rocket, and Groot. It's a little underscaled. The base is terrible. It's just a glass, but I added that to make it look better. But it's still a cool piece. And then Iron Studios Diorama. These pieces are still incredibly impressive to this day. You know, great likeness, great detail. Falcon has these massive wings. He's flying. I did add this little, you know, like his little drone thing. You got Bucky. You know, Bucky looks fantastic. He's loading up that machine gun. You do have, also have an Ant-Man right there, which looks great. Uh, and then Captain. Captain looks fantastic. Action posed, ready to defend his team against Team Iron Man. Now, Iron Man, we do have the complete team in one-fourth. 
So you got War Machine holding that like baton. Uh, yeah, you got Iron Man and Black Panther. Very cool. And that's the Hot Toys, you know, gone. As you can see, it looks plasticky. But I really love this setup. It looks so cool. And then you complete the team with Civil War Spidey by Queen. Black Widow. Technically, it's, you know, from Iron Man 2, but it's the best Black Widow one-fourth in the market. I like it more than Queen's. And then the TV show version of, you know, Vision. I did have an Age of Ultron Vision, you know, but I sold it to get this one. I like this one more. So that's all the MCU One Force. After this, you go into the ultimate Marvel bust wall. This is one of my most impressive displays to date. We're adding Thor bust next week on Thursday. Although I'm guessing it might arrive Wednesday. But it completes this wall. Unless we ever get a Hawkeye bust by Queen, uh, we're pretty much done. So yeah, very impressive wall. And my favorite statue in my entire collection, Queen Studios Thanos. 45 inches tall, like 45 inches wide, 30 inches deep, weighs like 250 pounds. Absolute holy grail, Jupiter's cock. But before we get to that, and some close-ups, we're going to check out Queen Studios Vision Bust. Very cool. Black Panther. Both are from Infinity War. You'll notice I do add a bunch of props as well, like the beads. Uh, then you got a custom Black Widow bust by Inner Studio. This is from the movie version. Silicone bust. Then you got Avengers Infinity War Mark 50 bust, battle damaged. So I love the battle damage on this. Very cool. And then you got a, really just a Mark 50, you know, arc reactor prop. And then Pepper Potts from Endgame. Alexa, turn on Marvel statues. Oh, Alexa can't do it. Alexa, shut up. All right, then you got the Iron Spidey bust. This was my first Queen Studios bust I ever owned. Still a great bust, but they've definitely made massive improvements since. Queen Studios uh, Venom bust. Huge bust. Very cool. That mouth is insane. Then you got Captain Marvel from the Captain Marvel movie. Again, a very cool piece. I did add the little Captain Marvel pager there. But yeah, very cool bust down low, but the cream of the crop is definitely what's above. Cause that's where you got these crazy silicone busts with insane detail. Loki, one of my favorites. Behind we do have a you know, the Loki staff and Thor's uh, Stormbreaker. You know, because it's going to go perfect here, Thor. And we even got, we got all the Infinity Stone props as well, you know, from Thor 2. You know, cannot wait for Thor. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah, and then Thanos. We did add this little, like, collectible coin as well, which is pretty cool. He comes with this crazy COA as well. But I mean, look at this, folks. You know, and he has this uh, remote control for light up. Although it's getting very weak. Goodness, the batteries just die so easily on these things. That's why I hate batteries. He's not silicone, he's polystone, which is fine because that means you're not going to have the degrade grading of silicone. But, you know, the polystone looks fantastic. And then he does have glass eyes. And then the armor just looks so good. You can see these massive, like, 40-inch pythons. Goodness. Yeah, and then I uh, got this queen coin that came with my Mark 50. Then you got Captain Bust, which is the second best bust in this setup. You know, because he's half torso, more or less. You know, silicone everything. Although, that is polystone. <laughs> but the hands, silicone. You got Molnir. Half broken cap shield, silicone portrait, glass eyes, very good likeness, blood, hair, metal shield, very cool. Here's another Eye of Agamotto, but on the little display stand, you know, just from the Doctor Strange movie. Doctor Strange bust, another one of the bests. 
extremely cool bust. One of the best faces of any humans I own. You know, just like perfect likeness, crazy good hand-punched hair, glass eyes. You now this bust is perfect. Got life-sized baby Groot and Ant-Man and the Wasp and Hulk bust. All silicone, hand-punched hair, teeth. Uh, I'm not sure if they're acrylic or not, but they look great. You know, and then this is the other Infinity. We got the Power Stone in here and, you know, Star-Lord's helmet. You know, and then the other props are actually in my bathroom. <laughs> yeah, and you got a sideshow art print as well. And a little Ant-Man and the Wasp up there. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this room. As you can see, we got a, like, <laughs> probably $100,000 in this room alone. Uh, you know, these silicone bus are like four grand each. Thanos was 9,000, you know. So just a lot of money involved, but the best of the best when it comes to Marvel and DC for me. Yeah, and MCU technically is not done just yet. We do have my Avengers Cove. Uh, you got the Iron Studios 1 6 scale. These are my only 1 6 scale statues. Now I've sold the rest. You got Vision down there because he can't fit up top. But you got Thor fighting Hot Toys Loki. Iron Man, which his lineup still works pretty good. Chitari Commander Hot Toys. I only own two Hot Toys. Cap, Black Widow, Hawkeye. These two are from Age of Ultron because they never made Avengers 1. And Hulk. And then we got poster here, poster here. 3D printed, and this poster. <laughs> then you go into the Iron Man bathroom. Uh, so this was just unutilized space. I wanted to get a Mark Seven display just because Mark Seven is my favorite costume. Mark Seven Avengers One is what got me to love Marvel movies. You know, like I liked Iron Man and Thor and Cap before, but Avengers One is like it transitioned to me. Like I absolutely love this. So we built more or less an ultimate display with the best dust and statue out there of mark seven the half scale my only half scale in the collection i sold all the other half scales that we had years ago yeah proof that tony stark has a heart technically that is from iron man 2 the tesseract this is the other infinity stone prop mark seven bust by queen and the half scale is also by queen these two are fan for fantastic 3d printed vendors logo Iron Man logo and Stark Industries logo, and then the Iron Man movie. So yeah, it's just my Iron Man bathroom, super cool. Got an air purifier in here as well. And then I technically got some uh, just old movie props. You know, I never sold these. Indiana Jones, Pirates, Harry Potter, just because, you know, I used to have statues from them and I kept the props. Who knows if someday I decide to, you know, get statues from those movies again, I can utilize the props in the future. After that, we're going to... Jurassic Park. So I want you guys to uh, envision the music in the background because I can't play music because then I can't monetize the video. But you got the Chronicles cane, you know, with the mosquito and chamber. Very cool prop by Chronicle. This is the best Jurassic Park statue out there. The Rotunda T-Rex by Prime One Studios. I also added this little, it's kind of in scale, I think, but it looks really good. So this is the best of my Jurassic, extremely cool, massive, like 30 inches in diameter for this base. You know, I, I just love it. It's so big though, we can't, you know, put it over here. So over here is the main Jurassic display. So we've sort of built this out in, you know, a few ways. So the top shelf is all Jurassic Park from the OG movie. You got the Clever Girl Raptor bust, the raptor resonating chamber, raptor hatchling raptor, and raptor claw, and the best velociraptor 1.6. So it's like the ultimate raptor display. You know, we did leaves in the background, raptor enclosure, Jurassic Park logo. It's a perfect, you know, display. And then you also got a little one tenth here from that scene. So very cool. Then you go into the one tenth scale, you know, Iron Studios T Rex stepping on the Jurassic Park car. Just a great centerpiece to this whole setup. Along with the one tenth scales, Dilophosaurus and Raptors. I kind of feel like those are the big three dinosaurs from the movie. Raptors, Dilophosaurus, and T-Rex. So that was my main focus. Now this has like the little kids inside the car. Very cool statue. Huge, one tenth, three feet long. Prime one Dilophosaurus. Fantastic statue. I will eventually be adding a Barbasol can right here. 
most likely the Paragon X1, which ships in a few weeks. You know, and then I might change this poster out, actually. I was thinking of doing more leaves and then getting a license plate, you know, like uh, that, as well as like a pamphlet book. Like that would re be better than the poster. Uh, above, you have the it, you know Jurassic World Dominion bus, basically. So by Infinity Studios, the Giganotosaurus. These are my most detailed of all my dinosaurs for sure. And of course, the T-Rex from Jurassic World. Extremely cool. These are about, uh, I'd say, maybe one six scale, if I was to guess. Underneath it are my Super Predators, the three toughest bad boys out there, outside of the T-Rex, of course. You got the Indominus Rex. Jurassic World is, you know, Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, my two favorite movies from the franchise. We have a little one-tenth baby blue. Another Velociraptor claw, like a different claw. You got the Mosasaurus, the toughest one in the sea, just dominating that shark as a snack. And the Spinosaurus. Now these are the big three super predators from the Jurassic series. You know. So yeah, love my Jurassic Park setup. Before we go to the video game, we gotta check out this room, which is my Lord of the Rings Transformers Monsterverse room. So of course the big thing is Jetwing Optimus, which is my favorite statue. You know, Thanos is my favorite collectible, favorite bust, but if we're talking just statues not including busts, he's my favorite statue. We'll get to him in a sec. We'll check out <clears throat> Starscream. These are all by Prime One Studios. These Transformers are probably one, God, what is this? Maybe one, 30th or 120th scale, if I was to guess. They're super detailed and super cool. Now, like, ridiculously cool. Shockwave, one of the best statues in the collection. Massive, massive, massive. So, like, 38 inches tall, like, 30-something inches deep and wide. Stupid big. You know, and stupid cool. You know, just, like, look at the size of it next to my hand. Crazy cool. But Jetwing does top him due to the dynamic pose and the superior base. That wingspan is over 40 inches. Amazing detail all throughout. Gigantic cannon arms. Flying pose with the drillers. I mean, just look how cool this base is. Unbelievably cool. Now, this is all basically Dark of the Moon. My favorite Transformers movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Sentinel Prime, another fantastic piece. I do posters behind up every one of them, as you'll notice. Sentinel Prime looks great. I like to do the double sword, sort of like Thanos with the shield. And then one of his, you know, devices he used. Then you go into T1. T1, T4. It's kind of a mix of everything. Technically T2, Megatron. This was my first Prime 1 Transformer statue. Uh, I actually got it for free. Uh, a buddy of mine gave it to me for helping him out. But fantastic statue. One statue of the year back when this came out. This was a long time ago. But still holds to this day as a fantastic piece. But you can definitely tell Prime 1 is up their game with this bad boy. <clears throat> Those were the next two big ones I bought. Optimus, which is like the ultimate grail. I still remember to this day looking at photos at Sideshow's website being like, Oh my gosh. I still remember watching... Francois Napolitan's video at Comic-Con and he was like, Prime 1 Bumblebee. And he just loved this statue. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get that. I still love it to this day. It's a perfect Bumblebee statue. And I do have these cars and the bus. You know, got the Transformers 2 right there. So I, I like to add all these different props and everything. This is the exclusive, so I do have the AllSpark. Ironhide, Jazz, Ratchet. You know, so we got the entire OG team. All five Autobots. They all look fantastic. You know, the detail on these Prime 1 are second to none. There's so many intricate parts. So cool. You could just look at them all day. You know, then you got Grimlock. This is actually one of my YouTube videos that has the most views. 
has like 600,000 views or something. I haven't looked at it in a while, but over 600,000 views. So I made a lot of money off that video. Goodness. You know, that was a long time ago. I, my statue collection was upstairs then. Lockdown. The remaining T4. Uh, technically, uh, Drift is T5. Then you got Knight Optimus and Galvatron from T4. Both look absolutely fantastic. You know, Galvatron is newer to the collection this year. You now, then we go into kind of the other films I feel fit good with Transformers. You know, G.I. Joe, because technically in Beast Wars they were introducing the Joes. So I feel like it goes great next to Transformers. So you got Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. These are technically comic based, but. You know, they look so good. They don't really look comic-y to me. They look movie-ish. So, you know, I love the Snake Eyes movie, the original G.I. Joe, two movies. So, big fan of them. And I can't, hopefully we'll get more, like, you know, G.I. Joe movies in the future. And then the Turtles, I feel, also fit really good because they're, you know, by Michael Bay. Michael Bay made Transformers. And so I just feel like it looks good. You know, and I still remember when they first showed this off at San Diego Comic-Con. I was like, holy crap. And originally, it's only going to buy Raphael. I thought, yeah, I'll just do one. Yeah, good luck with that. I can never just buy one. I bought them all. No, of course. And the Master Splinter. But huge pieces. You know, they have big bases. It doesn't even fit on the garage shelf when I connect them like this. So I actually have to... I did a bunch of Blu-rays with black cloth to, like, extend the shelf. But it worked out really good, actually. So I love this display. Then we're going into Lord of the Rings. So we got my Creatures display. Got the Fell Beast... Cave Troll, Balrog, you know, this is 120th, 110th, and probably 110th scale Balrog. You know, and I got the three orcs as well. Very cool statues, though. You know, I love these. I love the, you know, creature aspect. Just they're so unique and cool. Balrog's definitely the best. You know, but very cool display. Then you go into the main Lord of the Rings highlight, my 1-4 scale Lord of the Rings setup. My primary focus is Prime 1. You know, and we have a few sideshows that are still trickling in. The Holy Trinity display. Waited so long to be able to do this. Gimli, Aragorn, Legolas. Such cool concepts. Sliding down the shield from the two towers. Killing orcs. This life-size Sauron ring prop goes with the Sauron statue. Return of the King. When he jumped off the boat and was charging with the ghost behind him. That's an extremely cool Aragorn statue. Detail is just uncannily good on these things. You know, the texture work, everything. Gimli, two towers, you know, fighting against the Urukai. Extremely cool. Crazy good statues. Sauron, this is probably the best 1 4 scale statue ever made. Uh, it is like 43 inches tall. 10 out of 10 base. And I freaking love the underbase, the lava, all the skulls and weapons. So big. It's crazy to think how good of a price this was. This was like $1,600. You know, it's like it was cheaper than like what I just paid for the Witch King of Angmar. This was cheaper. And this is so big. Such good detail. It's such a grail. You know, it's crazy good. This is the Pure Arts Art Mask. Very cool, uh, like, companion piece to this, honestly. I really like it. You know, you have Badar Dur. <laughs> if I'm pronouncing it right, but super cool, you know, and this is uh, just a ring that came with Frodo, Nazgul, their uh, recent Lord of the Rings acquisition, but Witch King is shipping and should be here hopefully in a month, Nazgul is super cool, and it companions Frodo really good since they chased him the whole movie, but Frodo, this is from Return of the King when he was, you know, in the caves with, was it Shelob, the giant freaking tarantula? Very cool statue with Gollum sneaking behind him. And then we got, I believe this is United Cutlery. I can't remember, but, you know, human-sized, life-size mace. And then the United Cutlery, you know, Frodo, Sting, and then a poster. I have been thinking of potentially getting Aragorn's sword and putting it right there, either in front of that banner or remove the banner altogether and putting it there. Still debating on that. I may add it though, just because I think it'd look great. Then this is kind of like the two towers display. Well, 
Zaromon's display with his orcs and orakai. So you got Lurtz, Sideshow, Saruman, and the Bazooker Urukai, which is one of my favorites in this display. Just extremely cool. You know, and I still remember, you know, owning the Sideshow ones, which were great at the time. But when Prime 1 came off these, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> we have the Sideshow two orcs. For now, I'm keeping these. We may sell them in the future, I don't know. Uh, but I still like them quite a bit. And I want to have some orcs, just because I think orcs are so cool. You know, but eventually we're going to be adding the Witch King and Prime 1 Gandalf Ultimate Edition. So, absolutely love Lord of the Rings. I recently watched the entire Hobbit and Lord of the Rings trilogy. The, those movies still hold up today, even though they're 20 years old. Uh, they're still the best trilogy ever made, in my opinion. Next is Monsterverse. This is something that we completed this year. So, added a lot of pieces, actually. I think everything was added this year, but King Ghidorah and... Him, everything else was added. Actually, Godzilla bus I had as well. So we added three new pieces, but huge pieces. Godzilla vs. Kong was my statue of the year. My favorite diorama. Crazy good statue. You know, this thing's like 40, no, like 55 inches wide. 30 inches, like 31 tall and 25 deep. You know, but just crazy cool we'll turn the light up on for you so you can see it check this out now you can see godzilla's charging up his giant like atomic blast and boom alexa turn on dragon you know and then you got king Ghidorah. also has a very cool light up feature you know like it's about to shoot out the electricity blasts but it's such an ultimate display you know like beyond cool in so many ways so, absolutely love it. Alexa, turn off Monsterverse. Sorry, I don't know that one. Of course she doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I freaking love this. So. It is beyond cool in so many ways. King Ghidorah, stupid big. It's like more than, it's like 50 inches wide and like almost 40 inches tall. Super deep as well. Like it, As you can see, it extends off the shelf quite a bit because of its giant tail. But extremely cool statue. Then you go down below, you got Mecha Godzilla, very cool. Godzilla Bust, also just like insanely cool. Kong Bust, which is a newer acquisition. Silicone Bust by Prime One, and then the Kong vs. Skullcrawler. So, very cool display. I've just, you know, I just finished watching, or at least I'm caught up to date with Monarch. Now, the TV series based around, you know, Monsterverse. Very cool. So, I love Monsterverse. Uh, I'm done collecting it. I'm not getting any more. You know, the only thing I technically have is wall space right there if I ever wanted to get something. And I've thought, should I consider the Kong Axe and wall mount it? It's about the best thing I could do is do that. Otherwise, you know, the display is done, as you can see. So, yeah. Now we're getting to the final statue room. It's crazy. I have four statue rooms but we're going into the video game room so i'm a huge gamer have been ever since as a wee little lad so here we got gears of war for me xbox is good for two games gears of war and halo that's it i don't play anything else now i've played and beat every single gears of war statue out there so this is a custom marcus one fourth then you got the weta laura croft technically this is more of like the og games modernized ish no, because she fought these in, like, the original one. The Raptors. And these are about... They look very similar size to, like, my 1-6 Raptors, but Laura's 1-4. Very cool statue, though. It's huge. Then you got Master Chief Halo. I was a huge gamer back in the day. That is what my name, Flankster117, literally comes from. 117, John Spartan117. Flankster, because I was good at flanking in Halo 1, and I ended up becoming a pro Halo player. You can actually search it up, Utah Noobs, and see me playing Flankster V2. You know, but ultimately my name became Flankster117. Down below is where we put my extra Predator bus, you know, and Alien bus. Just, I don't like seeing the bus next to them the entire time. I feel like it, you know, it doesn't make it as special when you do the swap outs. All right, when you come into the video game room, this is mostly video game, but then it does have a pretty good sized DBZ setup as well. 
No, but we'll check out the Warcraft first. So this is from the movie Warcraft. But, you know, Warcraft obviously is a video game. There's WoW. I played Warcraft 1, 2, and 3. Love the movie. These statues are some of the coolest statues in my collection. You got Ordrum Doomhammer. This is all made by Damn Toys, except for Duratan. And this is by Weta. It's like a 1-6 hammer. Yeah, Black Hand. Huge piece. Very, very heavy. So super, super cool. You know, this is real hair, real leather. Goldan, which is still my favorite one. You know, just like that staff he's carrying is so cool. All these skulls inside of his horns. Crazy cool. Another Weta, you know, Durton's axe. And Durton is by Fizzin. They normally make like one six scale figures, but they decided to randomly make a Durotan, which is weird. But the statue is amazingly cool. 39 inches tall to the top of that axle. It's huge. These are huge one force, like very big. They're Hulk sized. Underneath, you got Prime One Bloodborne, the Hunter. And then Dante by Dark Side Collectibles. That's a newer acquisition. Uh, got it recently. And then you got Ghost of Tsushima. This is one of my favorite video game statues and video games in general, along with William Neo. So, you know, most of these are like soul games and, you know, action games. Uh, this is my Zelda closet. So this is still a work in progress. We're adding a few more things here. Above, you got Twilight Princess, one of my favorite Zelda games. In the back, because this is like we have shelving, we added a lot of stuff. We got the little Link props, Triforce, Princess Zelda. This is Ganon, one-fourth by first four figures. I've had this statue for probably eight or nine years now uh, same with Zelda they still look great though and they fit the collection really good this is a custom one link to rule them all very good link statue still my favorite tonight underneath you go into Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask it's by Dreams Figures or Dream Studios or whatever uh, but Kid Link Skull Kid back there you got a, some props and the swap outs We'll be adding Adult Link here in the next month. He'll go down there. We may add Princess Zelda, Kid Princess Zelda, and Adult Ganon to go with Adult Link. You know, down there. As long as it can fit. But I'll make it fit. But yeah, these are fantastic, though. Really love these statues. After that, you come into the Resident Evil 3 display. So you got a poster here I printed out. Gigantic Nemesis. This thing is huge, like 30, I forget how tall, but it's like 38 inches or something. Super big, super cool. Chasing Jill Valentine. She is incredibly well done. Got a zombie dog attacking from the front. And a zombie who's had his guts pouring out, literally, arm chopped off. Still trying to grab on. Such a cool diorama. Absolutely amazing. Underneath, we have my Devil May Cry 5 display which is my favorite Devil May Cry. You got Nero, Dante, and Virgil. But these are all absolutely amazing statues. Super, super cool. All by Prime One Studios. I mean, just look how cool those bases are. Fantastic display, though. And then over here in the main, main attraction of the video game room, uh... You know, we're going into God of War, which is one of my favorite series. Kratos, my favorite video game character. This is, you know, OG Kratos. This is the prototype by ARP. You know, it's got life-size axes right there. Or his Blades of Chaos. Very cool custom. Empty glass shelf. Eventually, Kratos will probably go down low, though. Now, then you got the Prime 1 diorama, which is ultimately my favorite video game diorama setup. Kratos first Balder with Atreus holding the axe, the little Viathan axe, his shield. And then you got a life-size shield above. More life-size Blades of Chaos from the new God of War. Underneath Horizon Zero Dawn, another one of my favorite series, Horizon 1 and 2. Just find a stalker. Prime One does an absolutely amazing killer job on these statues. I'm very impressed. I love every one of them. You got the Resident Evil 2. Leon and Claire. That's like a metal thing I got off of Amazon. Huge diorama. You know, these are two feet wide and deep each. So it's a huge display. 
and incredibly cool. I'm still trying to decide what I like more, this or that, because they're both so cool. I think RE2 might be better, but like if it is, it's like barely better. This is where my life-size custom Kratos bust is going to be, you know, going. Uh, that will probably ship in January. I might get it in February. You know, we're trying to make sure it's perfect, but it's going to be crazy big. Think Thanos bust big. And it's going to be amazing. This is the Blue Box Hyper Mimir. Very, very cool silicone bust. Got this very, you know, in recently, like in the last month. But very cool piece. My favorite bust of the year, Clicker. This is by Joop Bongarts out of Sweden. Crazy cool bust. Now, and again, I do have detailed reviews of all these pieces. So let's say you're interested in learning more about this instead of me talking about it for 10 seconds. You can watch like a 20, 30 minute video. Just search, you know, Clicker Bust Flankster. You'll find it. Now, this piece is huge, like 39 inches tall. Now, and underneath, last part of the display is the Witcher. For me, I'm a Witcher, you know, fan from the game. Not, I mean, I like the TV series, but I like the game much more. So I got the th the Trinity, Yennefer, Siri, Geralt, and then Aradin. Now, a lot of people are hyping up the TV series statues, but for me, I'm the game. That is my love for the series. So yeah, that's kind of the whole display. You know, three 48-inch wide garage house plus one glass curio. But, yeah, we're waiting on Uncharted to arrive, which will go right there for right now. The Kratos bust, and I'll do Last of Us, Uncharted, Kratos bust, move my mirror to the glass shelf and lower Kratos. So we can fit Uncharted in this display. Next is my ultimate Mortal Kombat wall. So I used to have a massive Mortal Kombat collection. Like, it took up a ton of space. I had every single PCS Mortal Kombat statue ever made. I had MK9, MK Classic, and I sold a lot of it off. I don't regret it. I mean, I still wish I had them if I had the space. But based off, you know, my allotted space and whatnot, I don't regret selling them. I, I'd go back and do it again. Because I made good money. You know, I didn't lose any money. I made a profit. And I sold them all. And I kept all the key characters I wanted. You know, from MK9... I kept Baraka. Classic, we kept Raiden, Liu Kang, and then the four original bosses. The only one we're technically missing is Shang Tsung, which I wish I could get. I should have bought the custom, never did. You know, Kintaro's uh, custom, the rest are PCS. The four OG bosses, though, all extremely cool. You can blame this Goro for the reason Flankster is a uh, Freaking statue collector, me Googling Goro statue and seeing that, it's the reason I'm here. If I could go back, I would have never looked at that statue. Uh, then we got the MKX display. This is the completed line. I do own that complete line. That's the only line I technically have complete, along with the one third. That MK logo is something I got off Etsy. Love this display, though. Very, very cool. My favorite is definitely the bosses, though. They just look the coolest. Then that. Above, you got the two busts on each end, Scorpion and Sub-Zero from MKX, which is technically part of this line. Uh, this is from, I believe, Amazon. Got the gold coin with the game, MK11, Scorpion, Reptile, Melina, all unmasked. To the, you know, the centerpiece, which is, of course, Goro one third, which is one of my favorite statues in my whole collection. And to the right, you got all the masked people. Katana, Jade, Sub-Zero... Sub-Zero Bust from MKX. Now, these are all classic. Katana and Melina are technically MK9 MKX, though. But it looks really good, and I did throw a ton of, like, props and crap back here. Scorpion Mask, Scorpion Collector's Edition. Shao Kahn Mask, you know, just kind of just background crap. There's a mask I got for cosplay, MK9. So, as you can see, it's just, like, background stuff. But it still looks really cool, stuff I'm, I want to keep. You know, I'm such a huge MK fan. I love the universe, and these statues are awesome. So I may eventually sell off Quan Chi and Koto Khan, lower the two, you know, Scorpion Sub-Zero bus, and do a Shao Kahn one-third on Throne above. And I'm waiting for a custom commissioner, the one that did the Kentaro, to make it. As soon as he shows me the prototype, and I love it, I can fit it, I'm going to pre-order it and sell those two. You know, because, I mean, I like Koto Khan, I like Quan Chi, but I'd much rather have a Shao Kahn one-third because I wish 
PCS would have made their one third because that was a grail. All right, and the last part of the collection, Dragon Ball Z. You know, I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z as a child. I'd literally run home from the school bus to my house to catch Dragon Ball, two episodes of Dragon Ball Z, and an episode of Dragon Ball GT. Every single day, I'd run home because I wanted to watch it. Me and my brother were constantly obsessed with it. We would watch it every day after school. We collected little toys. I bought VHS, you know, tapes of it so I could go back and rewatch it constantly. I modeled the reason I work out and want to be, you know, like strong and a warrior after Goku and Vegeta training to become a warrior. So a big portion of my life is revolved around Dragon Ball Z. You know, I'll listen to DBZ music at the gym, especially when I'm like lifting heavy weight. I'll listen to like when Gohan turns Super Saiyan 2 music or Goku Super Saiyan 3, Vegeta music. So it just plays a huge part of my life. There's a lot of emotional connection for me to Dragon Ball Z. And another thing that got me really big into collecting, you know, after I saw Goro, I was like, wait, if we have Goro statues, maybe there's Dragon Ball Z. So I instantly bought a Super Saiyan 3 Goku statue, a defunct Shang one. It, when I think back, that statue was terrible, but it's what got me into it. Then I found VKH, and here we are with mostly KD Collectibles, Prime 1, and a few other licensed so this display is really two things, a Goku Vegeta ultimate display with bust in one fourth, and then the ultimate villain display. You know, so you got KD Vegeta busts, absolutely insanely cool. And then the Jack Stowe Vegeta head holder, such a perfect companion to the Vegeta one fourth by Prime One. And then these are like wall scrolls I got from Amazon, got a scouter, I think that's licensed. That's pretty cool though. DBZ logo I bought from someone in my group, very cool though. And Prime 1 Goku, Jack Stowe Holder, KD Bust. We've got a four-star Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Finder. The, but very, very cool. You know, I like adding these props and everything to the statues. I feel like it's just a, a perfect display. We are going to be adding, though, a Shenron wall mount statue head right there in the middle. It will look freaking awesome. So excited to add that. Then over here you have Reborn Frieza. I'm sorry, Revenge Studio Frieza. I don't know why I mixed those up. Revenge Studio Frieza, Infinity Studios Cell, and Ryu Kid Buu. So these two are licensed. That is not. Now, this is a recent acquisition, but I do like this quite a bit. I love the colors. It really pops. The base is cool. Cell is huge and awesome. And I love the pose. Now, this is from when basically he blew himself up on the planet, came back, and he was talking about how one of his cells survived, and that's how he regenerated even stronger. Kid Buu, awesome statue. And then, of course, one of the holy grails of DBZ, Sume Broly holding Goku, and then the KOD ball bust. So, very cool statues. You know, so this is the villains in the Goku vs. Vegeta display. To the left is the Sagas display. So, first you have Android Saga, more or less. You know, Krillin, that's a Saiyan Saga Krillin when he was doing. This Destructo Disc against the Cybermen. Piccolo, technically, that's the Cell Saga version. But very cool statues. You know, Cloud Studios Krillin. KD Collectibles Piccolo. Best Piccolo in the market with the Swap Out Bus. Extremely cool. I don't have space to do like a Nappa, a Vegeta, and all the others. But, you know, I don't feel Nappa is needed. You got another Frieza. This one's by KD. The KD, uh, more or less, this is my Namek display. Eventually, m m both of these will probably be sold off for Sume Frieza and Sume Goku, or if not Sume Goku, then White Hole Studio Goku. Because I want Goku's first transformation. And technically, that is. It's just a little bit different pose, but I need to see what they look like and if they're better than KD. You know, come above, you got the Android Saga, Vegeta doing Final Flash, really against Perfect Cell. Androids, when they first appeared on the road, Transcendent Studios, this is by Ryu, licensed. Infinity Studios, licensed trunks, you know, so they all look fantastic. Then you got probably the two best statue companions in the whole setup. Gohan and Goku versus Cell in the final battle. And I threw the Ryu Vegeta Final Flash bust over there because technically he sort of, you know, he did a key blast against Cell to help Gohan win. But this is an absolute killer setup. Freaking love it. Some of the best. Above we have KD Trunks because technically after this happened, Trunks went back to the future. You know, so. So Trunks, and it looks really cool up there, especially since it's such a 
dynamic flying pose. And next to the latest final acquisition of the year, KD Androids. You know, from the history of Trunks movie, extremely cool statue, very good. You know, one of the best in this display in terms of just like single statues. Just so dynamic, so much going on. It probably is the best statue, and it's like insanely good detail. And then Sume Vegeta, KD Vegeta, KD Boo. Amazing statues. This is basically just like my Majin Vegeta display. Yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. You know, and then I put the other Vegeta bust right here for now. You know, eventually it'll be Gotenks there by Cloud Studios. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the collection. So I tried to do it as quickly, but give you a decent look and talk about the pieces as I could. I could probably do four hour room tours if I wanted to get really into each piece. But this is really a decade of me collecting. You know, I got into this nearly a decade ago. I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time and effort to really build what for me, you know, is the ultimate man cave, ultimate statue collection. So I got pretty much every single piece I ever wanted. And I have a lot more coming the next year. So, you know, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.